Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about interest rates again. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve announced another quarter point drop in the benchmark lending rate. A number of listeners are wondering what the Fed rate has to do with everyday lending rates. Some consumer credit card rates have actually increased in recent months at a time when the Fed rate was falling. So on today's show, we're going to read directly from the Federal Reserve's prepared statement and then give our interpretation of what it means. In his prepared remarks, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell refers to the committee that governs the Federal Reserve. The Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC as it's called for short, consists of 12 members, the seven members of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, the President of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, and four of the remaining 11 Reserve Bank presidents who serve a one-year term on a rotating basis. So these 12 people have more influence on the financial world than perhaps any other non-elected officials on the planet. Quoting directly from the prepared statement, Information received since the Federal Open Market Committee met in September indicates that labor markets remain strong and that the economic activity has been rising at a moderate rate. Job gains have been solid, on average, in recent months, and the unemployment rate has remained low. Although household spending has been rising at a strong pace, business fixed investment and exports remain weak. On a 12-month basis, overall inflation and inflation for items other than food and energy are running below 2%. Market-based measures of inflation compensation remain low. Survey-based measures of longer-term inflation expectations are little changed. Consistent with its statutory mandate, the committee seeks to foster maximum employment and price stability in light of the implications of global developments for the economic outlook, as well as muted inflation pressures. The committee decided to lower the target rate for federal funds rate to one and a half to one and three quarters percent. This action supports the committee's view that sustained expansion of economic activity, strong labor market conditions, and inflation near the committee's symmetric 2% objective are the most likely outcomes, but uncertainties about this outlook remain. The committee will continue to monitor the implications of incoming information for the economic outlook as it assesses the appropriate path of the target range for the federal funds rate. In determining the timing and size of future adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will assess realized and expected economic conditions relative to its maximum employment objective and its symmetric 2% inflation objective. This assessment will take into account a wide range of information, including measures of labor market conditions, indicators of inflation pressures, and inflation expectations, and readings on financial and international developments. Wow, so there's a lot of stuff in here. What does it all mean? It means first and foremost that the Federal Reserve wants to see inflation. Not that it really wants to devalue the currency, but certainly federal government wants to devalue the currency. It's a way of taxing the population without the population really noticing. And 2% is the number that they've targeted as being the perfect number. It's enough to devalue the currency, but it's not painful enough for the population to rise up and protest against the falling value. In my view, we can expect interest rates to remain low for some time to come. While there's been stimulus in the economy since the summer, it's not uniform. We're seeing increased demand in real estate, which is sensitive to interest rates. And real estate refinance activity in July and August was up 75% compared with June. Manufacturing numbers are down, and some are blaming it on the trade negotiations. But in truth, I believe inventory numbers are the real reason. We're seeing troubles in several sectors, including the automotive sector. When I drive past car dealerships, whether it's in rural upstate New York or in the core of a major city, the dealership lots are absolutely bursting at the seams with inventory. I haven't seen dealer lots this jammed with inventory in a long, long time. I'm seeing manufacturers offering very aggressive deals in order to move product off the lots. So back to real estate. As a real estate investor, your borrowing cost is usually tied to one of two indexes. Most short-term loans, like home equity lines of credit and other revolving credit lines in real estate, are tied to something called LIBOR. This is the London Interbank Overnight Rate. That's the lending rate that banks use to pay for money that's stuck between accounts on an overnight basis. It's short-term lending, and therefore short-term variable interest rate loans are often tied to an offset from the LIBOR rate. Long-term lending rates for permanent financing tend to be indexed to the 10-year U.S. Treasury bill. 
So if you're looking for long-term permanent financing, whether it's conventional or an insured non-recourse loan, whether it's through one of the agencies like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or something that is mortgage insured by HUD, that is the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the U.S. 10-year Treasury bill is the benchmark. If the T-bill yield goes up, then your rate's going to go up. If the T-bill yield goes down, your rate is going to fall. And when the Fed sets rates, they're really setting the rate at which the U.S. government borrows money. And ultimately, that trickles through to the T-bill rate. Both short-term and long-term U.S. government bonds are linked to that rate that the Federal Reserve set yesterday. Today, the loans that are backed by HUD are the most cost-effective form of permanent financing in the market. For stabilized assets with at least three years of income history, I'm hearing that these loans are pricing at about 3.1% for a 35-year fully amortized loan. Now that 3.1% also carries a mortgage insurance premium on top of it. We'll see if this rate drops in the coming days if the U.S. Treasury yield drops. The fall in rates was widely anticipated, and some of the lower pricing was already reflected in the market pricing ahead of the announcement. As a real estate investor, you're in a great position to lock into some great terms on some long-term financing, and even some strong terms on short-term financing. So as you think about that, take a look at your borrowing portfolio and use this opportunity to adjust. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.